merciless, ruthless, a gun for hire. For a reasonable price, these men solve problems quickly and conclusively in the only way they know how. Every year, the Philippine National Police report an average of more than 6,000 incidents of murder and homicide. Of these slayings, an unknown number are believed to be carried out by paid gunmen hired to perform a lethal task. From the criminal underbelly of Manila, they wreak their mayhem, challenged only by those who are willing to stare death in the face. But these are no ordinary gunmen. These are professional assassins operating as an organized network. They are among the most feared men in the Philippines. are a special breed of criminal that can be found anywhere in the world. But in the Southeast Asian nation of the Philippines, gun for hire killers come straight from the slums. Kasi po may barkada ako na alam ko ganun yung trabaho. Tapos nung walang wala po ako, uh, hindi nga ko siya ng tulong. Kaya hindi naman ako napahiya sa kanya. As a new recruit to the Assassin's Network, Dennis was required to prove himself worthy. If he was to become a professional assassin, killing a complete stranger should be second nature. Dennis was given a firearm and asked to execute a man who had been abducted by his recruiters. Kasi bago lang po kasi ako dun eh. Sinama niya ako, nag-observe ako. Pero may mga pagkakataon na ano, yung meron silang dalang tao. Nakatali na yun eh. Nakatali na yung tao sa akin. Assassins are very easy to come by. Many uh, people have been killed, prominent as well as non-prominent people, because they had uh, personal enemies, even political enemies. Assassination, uh, as I've written in my columns, have become an industry. July 3rd, 2008. A group of rap artists have finished a recording session. As they leave their recording studio, gunmen open fire, spraying the rappers with bullets. Two members of the group are killed. The shooting is a massive shock to the community. The group, known as Habala Harp, became an overnight music sensation following an online hit called Life of a Gangster. The young rappers had become local heroes, known for lyrics that resonated with the Filipino youth who struggle every day in the Manila slums. Gumagawa kami ng kanta, tapos lalo mo kami alam eh, kasi wala mo kami nakakawi na ano eh. Wala na lang paglabas namin, silbabal na lang kami. Following their rise to fame, the rappers received a series of death threats, which they believe came from jealous rivals. Hindi ko masabi kasi kung ano yung banta sa kanila, kung meron ba, o kung sakaling meron, eh, totoo ba, o seryoso ba yung pagbabanta o banta lang. Meron, pero yung mga banta na yun, yung mga about net talk shit, sa inggit, dala namang inggit kasi sikat ka. On July 3rd, 2008, the seemingly harmless threats became a reality. Gumagawa kami ng kanta, dito tumama yung bala. A team of masked hitmen opened fire on the five-man group. Three members were shot and immediately taken to hospital. Two of the band members, rappers MJ and Dino, were killed in the gunfire. To the surviving members of Hook Balaharp, the attack bore the mark of professional assassins hired from the slums by a rival gang. Siguro kaya sila natulak sa ganung uri ng pamumuhay na maging gun for hire dahil sa hirap ng pamumuhay, hirap natin dito sa lipunan na lahat halos naging ano kami napasama kami sa gang related pero na totally gang kami pero na ano kami bulat kami sa ganyang ano eh, kalakaran eh wala na yun ano na kami lalo na kami mga ganyan-ganyan na kami Yun. Where money is 
is scarce, life is cheap. To hire the services of a professional killer can cost as much as 20,000 US dollars for a high profile target, or as little as $120 for a hit on an average man. Guns are, are a dime a dozen in the country. The access to the gun has uh, made uh, the assassin's job uh, very easy. You can get an assassin for as low as 5,000 pesos and as high as a million or half a million pesos, depending on the prominence of the target. In a country where more than 40 million people live on less than two US dollars per day, sheer desperation can lead to a life of crime. And for some, on the brink of abject poverty, becoming an assassin is nothing more than a paying job. Maybe there's a real assassination group. And if I back out, then they'll come out in their headlines and say he got scared about the assassins. On August 21st, 1983, Nino Aquino, the leader of the opposition party and would-be president, is shot dead on the tarmac of Manila's international airport just seconds after the <laughs> People with enemies, personal, political. Politicians are uh, good targets. It's simple as that. Philippine history, of course, is can be said a history of, of great people, uh, the Filipino people. But it is the Philippine history is also also history of, you know, um, treachery, uh, conspiracies, political killings, and assassinations. Since before the Spaniards arrived, violence has been tied to Philippine politics. The murder of Ninoy Aquino, an outspoken opponent of the Marcos dictatorship, remains one of the most infamous assassinations in modern history. You have to be very ready with your hand camera because this action can become very fast. In a matter of uh, three, four minutes, it could be all over, you know. And <laughs> I may not be able to talk to you again after this. Aquino has long been dead. Uh, he was killed as he set foot on the airport tarmac. In my opinion, they got the wrong guys. The, uh, the soldiers, only one guy uh, knew about the, the assassination plot. The others were innocent. I interviewed them. Only time will make uh, the assassination of Nino Aquino justice, and the assassins were the masterminds known but not now. Many of the assassinations can be classified as one, probably they were politically motivated. Probably they wanted to take someone from power or they wanted to maintain their power, that's why they kill. Being a politician is a risky business, especially during election campaigns. Avelino Sonny Razon is a retired police chief who is running for mayor of Manila. For him, death threats have become a part of everyday life. This uh, situation has been with me while I was still in the service. I'm now retired, but I still get uh, death threats. It's been part of uh, my regimen, part of my day-to-day uh, -day life. If elected, Rasan has vowed to make the war against crime a top priority. And with significant influence in law enforcement circles, this makes him a likely target for assassination. I just go about my uh, schedules and uh, try to be careful so that fall into these uh, death threats. But politicians can only do so much to combat the gun-for-hire problem. Eventually, the fight has to be taken to the streets by law enforcement agents who are not afraid of the possible repercussions. 
Wally Sambaro is a multi-awarded police colonel whose 27-year career included first-hand experience hunting assassins. Despite stepping down from the force years ago, Sambaro still has a bounty on his head. Well, I survived an ambush. I was, uh, I came from my office in, uh, in, in Quezon City. And 15 minutes uh, after leaving my office, I was uh, cruising along with my two bodyguards in, uh, in Quezon City and Rodriguez Avenue. Madalas kasi, siyempre, pag binigyan kami ng trabaho, usually, sinesurvey namin yung tao, yung lugar. Kinikilala namin. Tapos pag kabisado na namin ng galaw o kilos ng tao, tsaka namin siya lalakarin. We didn't notice that uh, there are two motorcycles following us. The modus is uh, using a motorcycle, a tandem motorcycle. Somebody's riding in the back of you. Because of the traffic in Metro Manila, you cannot use a car here because you will be easily captured. So use a motorcycle without plates for registration with a tandem. Um, halimbawa, naka, naka uniform ng isigyante, tapos naka motor. Yung isa driver, yung isa iiwan na yung sa aabang siya sa kabilang kanto tapos lalakarin yung berador mismo yung tao. The guy at the back of the motorcycle will be the one or, or the hitman who will uh, do the job. My car was hit 65 times and um, and luckily I survived. I was hit by six bullets, one in the head, two in my arms, left arms, and three still embedded at my back. Sambero survived the attack, thanks in large part to his understanding of the assassin's modus operandi. The procedures of the gun for hire here is to hit you at the back of the car or the side, and then to finish you, they have to go to your side, open the door, and hit you again in the head. But this time, they failed to do the whole cycle or the procedure because in an ambush area, there are only two things to do to survive. Number one is to get out from the killing zone. The second thing, the last, is to hit back, fire back to your enemy. The gunmen were never caught, as is often the case. But the trigger men represent just one element of the assassin's network. Like organized crime and mafia families the world over, these gun-for-hire operations are believed to be controlled by central figures known as the masterminds. And these men can be harder to catch than the assassins themselves. In the streets of Manila, capital city of the Philippines, locally trained assassins are hired to carry out executions, gangland style. May ano, pinti years na. Nagtatawagan kami. Tatawagan kami yung cellphone kung nahayang kita kung kikita kung gusto nga lugar. Kung ano yung mga tao ito na ito na ano. Kami ito, dito kami kikita. Kakapodopod na kami dito. The killers themselves are just one part of an intricate and organized network offering their services through the criminal underground. Assassinations start with payment from a client to a middleman. The middleman then contacts the mastermind who controls a ring of gun-for-hire killers. Depende, meron nagahatag ka lahat ng milyo, damo kami ang nagbabahin-bahin. Kahit ako lang ako saan tumira, kahit may grupo kami, among babaragin. Minsan 50, 30. 20. Depende sa ano, pag kukuha na namin, naaabot na ng kwarta. The assassin is given the details of his target and a portion of his pay up front with the remainder to be delivered after the kill. Dire kayo maharam kayo, may bayad na kami. Basta ang bayad, portantya mo. Inevitably, however, these killers run into the cold hand of the law at the National Maximum Security Penitentiary in Manila. Justice knows no mercy for men like these. Ang kaso ko, murder, dahil nakapatay ako. Sinebihan niyo sa ko nung pumasok ako sa trabaho ito. Meron akong isang tropa, isang 
kanyang magulang, ex-military, hinahasa kami para lalo pang tumibay pagdating ng araw, ganun trabaho. Those who are caught are charged in court for first degree murder. They did not end up uh, as guns for hire, but uh, as a murderer, as uh, uh, others end up with the homicide case. If a person is found to be a guns for hire killer, uh, he ends up uh, death penalty or life sentence. Di naman po ako sinabi ng amin kaso ng adaw ako murder. Ang gansa din nila na ako na headquarters. Tapos dumating na yung complainant na ako ng adaw yung pumatay. Nagulat ako, alam ko nga sa sarili ko na lalabas ako, pero nagulat ako, nagtagal na ako ng 2 years dito. Law enforcement agencies look for other ways to control the violence by imposing tighter regulations on firearms. But much like the U.S., a gun culture is said to have emerged. The Filipinos came to love guns. The favorite handgun of a Filipino is the 45 caliber pistol which the Americans brought with them uh, when they liberated the country from the Japanese. It's a favorite weapon of choice. I carry a 45 myself. But with escalating violence, the Philippines police have launched an intense campaign specifically targeting gun-related crimes. Nationwide gun bans are now put in place prior to major elections. The bans prohibit civilians from carrying firearms outside of their homes, with thousands of checkpoints established across the country. But we're very uh, strict, particularly on the implementation of the firearms law, especially after looking at the crime statistics and the crime mapping, it will tell us on what particular hour of the day or night firearms are being used. So we do a lot of checkpoints to check on vehicles and even uh, motorists to check especially on firearms and drugs. According to figures released by the Philippine National Police, the bans resulted in an almost 70% drop in crime across the country. But more work remains to be done, especially when firearms can easily be acquired on the black market. A 45 uh, caliber pistol legally costs uh, 90,000 pesos. You can get a gun for as low as, uh, as 5,000 uh, or even lower. Guns uh, abound in, the, in my country. It's easy to find a gun. When it comes to the manufacturing of guns, the criminal mind finds new and disturbing ways of creating potentially lethal weapons. Ang ginagamit namin pagbuo ng baril, toy gun, sa yung posrad ng gleta, tornillo, dalawa, isang gis, isang dose, sa kapo lagare, sa pandigit. Beginning with a toy gun, illegal gun makers in the Philippines are able to fashion a real firing device out of household items, a weapon capable of taking a life. We don't know who it is. 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 We don't know Pagka gantong hindi ganba, nakakakuha ng mga tatlo sa isang buwan. Minsan sumasabra pa, pagka may order lang. Basta kami, ginagawa lang namin. Nordar sa amin, pagka binayaran kami, tapos na yun, wala na kami pakailang sa kanila. With no end in sight to the rampant poverty that plagues Philippine society, there are likely to be more willing young men who view contract killing as a legitimate option for a better future. In the process, they draw the attention of specialized police who are now targeting the assassin network. In Metro Manila, we don't have a, a list or the, a big number of private armed groups, PAGs, and we have a campaign to be able to remove this group, disarm them, identify them and disarm them. This is a year-round thing. Because of uh, poverty, I mean, the Philippines is still a poor third world country. Um, our history is a history of struggle. The ordinary man's everyday struggle against poverty 
So, you know, it's, it's, if, if, if you offer someone money, even if it's just, you know, probably a, 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 few, a few dollars, you're going to, to, you're going to have a hired killer who can kill people. But poverty is no excuse for murder. For the victims that have experienced the cruelty of the professional assassin and a society that has long grown weary of violence and bloodshed, the killings cannot come to an end soon enough. May ada kada ko pagbago kay kun makakuha ko to na ako mga anak. Ah, kung pagkatapos na ako mga anak, babago na ako kay may ada naman ko suporta ako. Mabubuhay naman ako nila. May konsensya. May sana ng tao, may konsensya. Tong dito na tong kahirapan, nabubuhat na tong marawit. Kaya nagkukuri mong kita. Well, uh, my message for the gun for hire groups or those people who perpetrated my uh, failed assassination or the whole industry of the gun for hire. I understand your situation. It's a livelihood for you and you have no personal... We have no personal things between us. You don't, you're not mad at me. Somebody just pay you. And you don't even know who paid you. So uh, I'm lucky, but those others who will not be lucky, some of your targets. Remember that one day you die too. If you believe in God and you believe that there's second life, well, during the that judgment day, when you are on their dying bed, you remember that you killed a lot of people. People who don't know the reason why they were killed. And Let's see each other in the second life. Kasi maraming sa lugar namin, sa tundo, ang tawagin na nung lugar ng mga walang puso. Mga kabataan masyadong kapusok, ganyan, ganyan. Kaya namin nagawa yan para imula din sila na yung pinapasokan nila, mali yun. Kasi galing na kami doon, kaya kailangan namin ilabas sila doon. Kasi pag di nila nilabasan yun, it's either puta mo, ospital, kulungan, at simintero.